Please help me welcome some neighbors around you. Welcome some people around you. Go out of your way. Find somebody. If there is somebody around you that you don't know his name, find out the person's name. Okay, let's start with Genesis 22. From verse 1 to 14. 22 from verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here, here I am. And he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering at on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning. Many people will not rise early in the morning to do that kind of thing. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of the young men with him. And Isaac his son, and he split the wood of the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up, lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. That was a faith statement. He was going to sacrifice Isaac and he was talking of coming back with Isaac. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and the knife and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb? For the bond offering. Very good question. We have the fire. We have the wood. But where is the lamb for the bond offering? He has seen his father make sacrifices before. And Abraham said. My son. God will provide for himself. The lamb for a bond offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the Lord. And do or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And there, and there behind him was a ram caught in a ticket by the horns. When God provides, he takes the fight out of it. The fight of the ram is in the horn. And that's where God sees it. The, fire, the ram couldn't fight. When God provides for you, he will take the fight out of it in Jesus' name. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Jire. As it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be provided. John 10:10. 10, 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. We all know this scripture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief is the devil. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. 
Jesus proclaimed openly, boldly. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for sakes he became poor, that we, that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus sacrificed to lift us out of poverty. Just like he sacrificed to lift us out of sin. Just like he sacrificed to heal us. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That even though he was rich, yet for sakes, he became poor. That we, through his poverty, might be made rich. An exchange. The next chapter, chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have abundance for every good work. Look at the total statements there, absolute statements there. And God is able to make all grace, all grace is every grace, divine favor and influence and love. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. All grace to abound towards you. That you always, some, how many times, how many seasons, always. Having all sufficiency, all sufficiency in all things may have abundance for every good work. Look at all those absolutes. All, all, every. God does not want us to be here struggling and being a disgrace to his name. God has a plan for our finances. God is not poor. I told you they said there is this thing. They said Satan rains diamonds. A man will be looking at it from here and say, how do I get there? God is rich, as rich could be. You can't exhaust the treasures of the earth. I will not finish on earth until God is done with this present order of the earth. It will not finish. God is a perfect planner. He's a God of design, purpose, objectivity, and plan. He ordered, everything about him is ordered. He's not confused, even when man is confused. Finally, look at 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. If you don't renew your mind in any area, Satan will take advantage of your ignorance and put you where you don't belong. If you don't renew your mind concerning health and find out what is God saying concerning my health, you will struggle with your health. After you're saved, if you don't study the word of God to know who you are in Christ, Satan will keep you struggling through accusations, through condemnations. You'll be struggling. And as long as you're entertaining his accusations, you're not making progress. As long as he's accusing you and you're, and you're, and you're seeing yourself in the picture he's painting, that's his full-time occupation. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren who accuses them before our God day and night. He will always accuse you, but you have to know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I mean, right standing with God and God's party. If not, he will cheat you ten times a day, like Laban. Third John verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, in all things, in all things, and be in health, just as your soul prospers. 
get it in the King James. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper, one, and be in health, two, even as your soul prospers. The spiritual prosperity is the driver. But God has these three priorities for us. That we may prosper. It's not spiritual prosperity he's, he's talking of. The last one, soul prosperity, takes care of spiritual prosperity. He's talking of financial and material prosperity. Then he's talking of health, good health. And then he's talking of our soul prosperity, which drives every other thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest of your desires shall be added unto you. Sometimes we want to put the cart before the horse. Can you get this in the Amplified Bible? Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. Three areas of key prosperity. And um, when you talk of the curse of the law and the fall of man, these are three key areas that were affected. As the spiritual work of man was affected, man took the nature of Satan, which is sin, and his fellowship with God you know, was broken. Man took on sickness and disease as a result of the spiritual state of man. And man became pan, began to struggle economically. The earth that was his source of live, uh, livelihood was yielding thorns and briars now. God told Adam, because you've done this in the sweat of your face now, you eat. You're going to have economic hardship. Life will become a struggle. But, so those three areas are the three areas being addressed here. Our spiritual life, our physical life, which is our health, our physical, which is our health, then our financial and economic well-being. When you look at the blessing of Abraham and the curse of the law in Deuteronomy 28, you will see, it, in fact, it, it talks more of economy than even health. But when he's talking of the curses, you see all kinds of diseases under the curse. And the heavens become brass and the earth becomes iron. Hardship. The rains are no more coming down. The ground has become hard. It has become tough sledding. So, this scripture, second John, I mean, third John verse 2, captures all those vital areas that are God's priority for us. One of those areas is your money life. Let me put it that way. When you talk finances, maybe you're thinking of bank. Your money life. Don't spiritualize it. Oh, you know, in those days, eh, the, the, the people I knew that were in SU painted a picture of Christianity that made it repulsive to me. And so even when God was calling me, calling me, I remember some of my friends that were there. Some of the people I knew that were, we used to call them SU. And I didn't want. One of my classmates, a, an architect, he used to tell us in the class, he was in SU, very committed SU member. He used to tell us then, he wouldn't even oil his skin. At least his hands. Men know the rubs I, I like women, but at least your hands and your feet shouldn't be looking dusty. Did you hear me? When God says anoint your head with oil, it's not women alone. He talked about it in the Old Testament. Anoint your head. Even when you're fasting, he said anoint your head. Clean up your face so that you don't appear to men to fast. So our friend used to say, they believed in this thing. The more, it's like the more you suffer, the more, the, the more we know you're walking. Buhari, Buhari spirit. If people know suffer, anytime they rule, he doesn't feel he's, he's walking. <laughs> this man, so, his son was so much so, he told us one day that if you eat food, enjoy it, that is sin. In other words, there should be no enjoyment for mankind. But the Bible says that God freely gives us all things to do what? Enjoy. The enjoyment he's talking about is not drinking tombo in Biapalo. That one, Nawahala. But God wants us to have a joyful life. 
So I'm talking about God's plan is financial and material blessing. God's plan is financial and material blessing. You know? There is the story of three young people that and went for a church service like here today. You know, people do all kinds of things when it comes to offerings because they don't have. Some people give empty envelope instead of people noticing that I didn't give. They give empty envelope. Now God, go put money inside. God, this envelope is yours. Put whatever you like inside it. You no, know, three young men went for a church service and it came time for offering and none of them had anything to offer. So one of them fainted and the other two carried him out. <laughs> to cover up poverty. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> Very fast thinking. You know, it's, it's an error to spiritualize everything about life. And the promises of God, it's wrong to spiritualize it. Everything is spiritual. Nothing is material. It's wrong. It's wrong. Then why do you eat food? If everything is spiritual, you're a spirit living in a body. Why do you eat food? That's because you're taking care of your material being. We live in a material world, planet Earth. We need material things to succeed here. God gave us a material body. Until this body is immortalized, it will remain material. And it needs materials to take care of it. Let's not be so spiritual and heaven-minded that we are no earthly good. I've heard preachers say that third John, not one, third John verse two, has nothing to do with finances and material prosperity. That is certain. I mean, they said it's spiritual. You want to, he wants you to prosper spiritually. What are you doing here on earth? If you're, all you do is prosper spiritually, nothing else to contribute here. Then why are we abusing the government when they don't provide us roads if material things don't matter? When they don't provide us water, we complain. If it's all spiritual, why do we complain of bad roads? We live in a physical planet and we have to, we need material things, we need finances to be able to maximize life on earth. To even be able to survive here. You need money. M-O-N-E-Y. Money. Let no man deceive you with spirituality. You need money. I can't enter. Try a bus conductor that is ready to die for 15 naira. You enter his bus. You say, you know, Pam. He is ready for two of you to die that day. Uh, you enter and then you're speaking in tongues. When it's time to pay, you're speaking in tongues because you're very spiritual. He will be patient with you when you finish speaking. Owomida. Speak in your tongues, but now in money, it's, it's money that he understands, not your tongues. After all, when you're speaking in tongues, it's God you're speaking to, not boss conductor. Okay, so... Um, it's wrong to say that that verse of scripture is addressing spirituality alone. It's not true. What of the health matter? You take it out. It's your spiritual health too. God knows what we need. In Matthew 6, 8, he says, For your father knows that you have need of these things. Before you ask him. He knows we have need of these things. But he encourages us to ask. He will not release. There are many things God will not give you until you ask. 
James says you receive not because you ask not. If we don't partner with God through our asking, through prayers, he will not, there are many things he will not release, even though he knows you have need of these things. And that's why we are praying. Take nothing for granted. That position of spiritualizing everything is certainly not true and is misleading. It has garaged many children of God. There was a time believers didn't even believe they should wear good shoes. Some of them were wearing, I came to a church to take over a church. I saw engineers coming for service with bathroom slippers. I saw an engineer, he was among those wearing bathroom slippers. And that because of whatever my, however he was taught and the mind was not re, 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 renewed. One brother I know very well that has helped me to work some things. He's a member of the CPM. That period in the 70s, poverty was so glorified by Christians that Christians became a reproach. Born again Christians became a reproach. They were not looking good. They were not talking well. And let me tell you, when you leave yourself hungry, you, you will become angry. And now a hungry man is an angry man. So they become, many Christians became mean. Hunger is real. A hungry man cannot account for his actions. One brother said that this thing about poverty, that it was so much that he was wearing bathroom slippers to church. A civil servant working in the Ministry of Finance. Because he knew no better. He said it was one day that Reverend Ezekiel came to church and said, many of you are disgracing God. That's when he woke up and went and bought shoe. Let your light shine and your shoes also. I'm telling you the truth. Don't ever glorify poverty. There is no virtue in it. Whether you call it sin, whether you call it sickness or disease, or you call it poverty, is the same person. He's the devil. The thief does not come before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life. Jesus checkmated him. That they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Not just having life, but abundant life. Can you say, abundant life is my portion? By divine ordination. Say it again. Abundant life is my portion by divine ordination. Say it again. Abundant life is my portion by divine ordination. So God created us here and placed us on this physical planet where he placed so much wealth and so much treasure. Look at in Genesis, even before the fall, he, he, he talked of the rivers that were flowing through the garden to, to the hand, land of Havilah. And there was gold in that land, and the gold of that land was good. Who put it there? For who? The gold of that land was good. So he placed us here and he wants us to access the world he puts here and put it to proper use. To bless mankind and glorify God. I told you this story. One of those that were, okay, at least two people that were on that trip with us are here. One time we went to Dubai and then our guide who was seeing us through in the bus, we were going through this and showing us, he pointed at the hotel. He said, you see that hotel, there's a white man there that every night he spent $7,500 on wine. Every night. That's every day. He spent $7,500. Some of us, if I give you $7,500, I've taken away your sleep. When, when a rat we pass, you jump up and go and check it whether it's still there. Now, wahala. Because you have not sized it up. Before God gave Solomon that amount of wealth, he first of all enlarged his heart, read the Bible, to accommodate it. 
The Bible says that the prosperity of a fool shall slay him. God enlarged his heart. That's what I'm doing. You have to develop a heart that can accommodate things. That's why, ah, we, when once you see anything another person is doing, ah, he must be stealing. It's not possible. No, he must be in a cult. So Satan blesses better than God. You, Christian, he must be in a cult. So it's the devil that gives wealth, not God. Renew your mind. Repent. Change your mind. God enlarged Solomon's heart and then released the deluge of wealth into his custody. Gave him wisdom. However, even though God put these riches here, because of the fall of man, much of the wealth of this planet is in the hand of the children of the devil. And they're using it to do a lot of harm. Look at the contribution of our politicians in Nigeria alone to, to, to harming this planet with the resources God gave to Nigeria. See how they stash away the money. No matter who is dying, it's not their business. Even when palliatives were, were, were bought, put in their cost, they stash it away to use it for their bad days. Money in a wrong hand can cause, more, cause much damage, much harm on earth, and it's costing a lot. Do you know the number of people drug laws kill because of money and the money they have? They don't care how many people they kill to maintain their authority and dominion in, a, in an area. They don't care. 95% of the wealth of this planet is in the hands of 5% of the population. They control everything. And God wants us to have access to money, to wealth, so that we can deploy it for the proper use. Wealth is being abused. It's being abused. The devil fears money. In the hand of a Christian that is kingdom oriented in his thinking. Let me put it this way the devil fears a Christian that understands his purpose, who has money. He, he can, he doesn't mind, he doesn't mind any sheikh having that money, he doesn't mind. Any drug lord having that money, they use it to serve him. The thief does not come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. They use it to carry out those things. Destroy young women. Destroy young men. Kill. He doesn't mind. But he fears a Christian who has money. Because he knows that we fight his kingdom. That person has what it takes to fight his kingdom. How do you think they gain political power in this nation? And not, as a matter of fact, all over the nations of the earth, they first of all amass wealth. Are you hearing me? And then they use it to gain political power. Okay. After that, it's finished. You are their mercy. When they get political power, they man positions of, they take over the land. God's priority in 3 John verse 2 is for his children, he's writing to his children, 
financial prosperity and material prosperity, one. Good health, physical prosperity, two. And then spiritual prosperity. Priority, areas of priority. A Christian who is a pauper will be a reproach to the name and kingdom of God. Oh, Lazarus made heaven. How many of you remember Lazarus? How many of us remember Lazarus in the Bible? Uh, yes, he made heaven. But he was a disgrace to the kingdom on earth because of his poverty. That, because of that poverty self, his health, you see, in these three areas, it was only heaven that, that Lazarus made. Physical prosperity, that's health, zero. You know his health broke down. You remember? You remember his health broke down. Souls, and he couldn't even get medical treatment. It takes money to get medical treatment. He was so impoverished, so poor, that the, the rich man would not, that is, despise to give him anything. There is one Aldomoro who was the dom, um, the mafia boss of the mafia group, Italian mafia group called the Red Brigade in those days. Do you know what he said? I don't buy into what he said, but it should prick our minds. He said too much poverty is basically a crime. <laughs> he said too much poverty is basically a crime. Some leaders, we just studied on a book. The leader who had no title. One of the things he said there is that the best way to help the poor is to make sure you're not one of them. If you're one of them, you're a problem on this planet. So here is Lazarus. He failed in two areas and passed in one. He made heaven. The rich man failed in one area. Spiritual prosperity. He passed the other two. He was healthy. He was wealthy. So two of them were flawed. Are you, both Lazarus and the rich man were flawed. The Lazarus was flawed in two areas. The rich man was flawed in one area. That was the driver. That's why he ended up in hell. But he enjoyed himself on earth. The Bible said he fed sumptuously. He ate well, dressed well, drove well. Lazarus could have done the same. Abraham did that. John 10.10, 10, abundant life. You see, in Genesis 12, uh, chapter 22, where we read, God revealed himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. He provides even in impossible situations. I have seen him walk. Brethren, I've seen him meet needs. I can talk from experience. He knows what you need every season. But you ought to position to access what he's supplying. Look at Genesis 22. Look at verse 8. Verse 7, rather. Get us verse 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, I've seen you make sacrifices before. There is something missing. My father, he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look. Look the fire. The, the king James says, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt off sacrifice offering? Where is the lamb? Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Somebody say, God will provide himself for anything he's demanding of me. If he doesn't provide, you're without. If God doesn't help you, you don't have help. No matter the effort. 
If it doesn't help you, you are without. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two went together. Verse 13. Verse 13. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a ticket. God has proven, it's a hard thing. God has proven his heart. Many stinginess is, the, is from the heart. It's the state of your heart. It's not your hand. It's not your pocket. It's not, the problem is not with your, with your checkbook or your, your, your bank app. It's heart. If your heart is not moved, your hand will not be moved. Some people are born stingy. They calculate everything and reason out everything. They're not liberal. The liberal mind shall be made fat, and he that waters shall be watered. I can never get stuck. Read my lips. In life, I can never get stuck. And I say this with every confidence and with the authority of the word of God. I can never get stuck. No matter the season. I may not handle all that I want to handle all around, but I will never get stuck. You will never see me. And this is a well that will never run dry. I will never lack for the word and revelation of God. And I will not lack for the things I need to survive on earth and to live and to move on on earth. Jehovah Jireh. And God lifted up, and Abraham lifted up his eyes. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. If you see a, a ram fight, it's just the horn. Moves back, charges, hits with the horn. When the horn is seized, entangled, it can't move, the, the fight is over. So Abraham gently went there and took it, and so Abraham held it by the horn, tied it the legs with the help of Isaac, and that was it. God took away the fight from that provision. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Sometimes God is trying you, your heart. Like Abraham, he will try every one of us. You don't even know it's a trial. You say, no, ah, no, no, no. Everything by calculation. Any pastor that lives by calculation is finished. When I signed in for pastoral ministry, when we did I, we went for the interview. We were discussing, we were, there were a number of us. We were discussing out there. They, I had the, in the discussion that what they, they, in that ministry they were paying pastors was 700 naira a month salary. We went for the interview. And then the, 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 the bishop asked me in that interview, say, okay, uh, if you have to leave your work as an architect and then sign in for pastoral work, how are you going to uh, cope with the salary you'll be paid? I told him I don't have answer to that one. I had to trust God. At the end of the day, it wasn't 700 naira. It was 1,500 naira. <laughs> That's where I started. Full-time ministry. And then somebody, it's not that somebody will jump up and call me a thief. Make I not reply you. Now God himself will reply you. I've, I've seen things. Read my list. I have seen things. Verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. Get, it, leave it in the, leave, get that in the King James. The Lord will provide. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah, the Lord, will provide. Even on this mountain, he will provide. You see, he revealed himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh, 
more than 400 years before he revealed himself to the children of Israel as Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Jireh is the lead name, is the lead revelation. Are you here? Is the lead revelation. God as the provider is the lead thing. When he provided that lamb, he provided everything Abraham would ever need or Israel. Romans 8.32. Romans 8.32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? When he provided the lamb, when he sacrificed Jesus, he provided every other thing we would need, including healing. Anybody here? Jehovah Jireh is the lead name. When he provided the lamb, he provided forgiveness for sin. When he provided the lamb, he provided righteousness for us. For God made him to be sin. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 No God as provider, and that, know that God is able in all circumstances. Dare to trust Him. Philippians 4:19. But my God shall supply all your need, no matter what it is according to his riches in glory, by the Lamb, by Christ Jesus, by the Lamb that was sacrificed, was sacrificed, remedy for all. All works of grace are made available to us by the sacrifice of Jesus. God's plan is financial and material blessing for his children. When there is a shortfall, it shouldn't be taken as the norm. Are you here? When there is poverty, that one is even a reproach. There is a difference between lack and poverty. Poverty, lack is, poverty is a state of being. Prosperity is a state of being that commands resources. Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, a slave, a servant. But why in the house of, house of Potiphar? God says, and Joseph was a prosperous man. It's his state of being that eventually changed every other thing. Poverty is a state of being. Lack is circumstance. This cup should be full, but it's three quarter full. So there's a shortfall. That's lack. Even that, God says he will take care of it. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Let's begin to look at things from God's perspective. Not what we inherited from our village, the thinkings from our parents, from our, our village, from our environment, from Nigeria. Nigeria, the way it is today, if you are not careful, it will program you for poverty. We eat two times, not by a law, not by any, not for lack, but... Why do I need to pack food into my tummy? For years, even the children, all of us are programmed the same way. If you eat in the morning, then by, by one o'clock, you're looking for what to eat again. Then by evening, 
You eat and you will just be dull throughout the day. God sent a raven to send bread, food, to Elijah in the morning and in the evening. Any other thing is jara. Are you hearing me? Uh, don't say, don't, when your nutrition is comes, don't say Pastor Owen told you. But I read it in the Bible. And God knew what he was doing. What I'm saying is, if you need to eat two times a day, don't adjust to one because of the circumstance in Nigeria. Raise your faith and learn to sow. If the past two weeks, if I tell you the seeds have sown, in the past two weeks, I don't stack money. The time will come for that. But I don't lack. Are you hearing me? Have a good dream. Dream well for your children. Unless you dream, unless you have a vision, you are not entitled to provision. Pro is a Latin word for. Provision. For vision. If you don't have a vision, you have no right for provision. You're not entitled to. If you have no plan, go and sit down. Que sera, sera. Wherever the wind blows. No. No. Raise your faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight, not by circumstances. We walk by faith, not by circumstances. Without faith, you can't make it. Raise your faith. Study on what God says about provisions and difficult times. How he deals with his people. And faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't tell me, don't tell me poverty is good. Uh, God doesn't want to bother about, about our finances. I was, 2021, I was in Anuba with a pastor and a, a couple in the East. And we started talking about these high pop things and Nigeria and all those things. We talked of Nigeria. The pastor, a pastor of maybe three decades, was telling me that God is not interested, telling us that God is not interested in who rules the country. I told him it's not true. In other words, God is not interested in the political process and who rules the country. I told him it's not true. Whenever a king sits on the throne, the kingdom will take the character of the king. We've seen kings that sat on the throne in Nigeria and violence and bloodshed became the order of the door all over Nigeria. Did you see it? There is a king that will sit on the throne and all you see is the exaltation of criminals all over the place. Are you seeing something? The kingdom will take the character of the king. So don't tell me God is not interested in who sits on that throne. You see criminals jubilating all over the country now. If God is not interested in who sees there, why did he have to bring down Saul to exalt David, who will move things in the right direction? Until you renew your mind, you'll be talking from your opinion, and your opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't count for anything, just like my opinion doesn't count for anything. It's what God says that matters. Don't tell me about poverty as if I have not, have not been poor in my life once. Don't tell me about it. Go and make the money and give it to me so that you will not be. So that brother, you know, that brother told me, the brother that was attending, see, yeah, yeah, you know, please make sure you are not lazy. Work for the money. Since money will make you backslide, give it to me so you won't backslide. All in favor, say amen. Aye. See these people. So you're no more spiritual. 
We don't the quarrel now. That brother told us, the brother that was wearing bathroom slippers until their pastor when they screamed at them. He said there was a sister, a brother that was working in a company. And he was working as a, a secretary. So he was working very hard and they promoted him. He resigned. He said that, that means he doesn't want the money that will come with the promotion to spoil his Christianity. He resigned. Ignorance. Satan took advantage of him. Now you will resign and go home to be facing your wife. Do you know what it means to face your wife without money? M-O-N-E-Y. God will help you if she doesn't lose her anointing. Because you want to be spiritual. Ignorance. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. Okay, let me... Jesus came, I said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Honestly, basic understanding of English tells me that poverty is not abundant life. It has nothing to do with it. That word prosper in third John 2 means to help on the road. God helps us on the road so we see progress. It means to succeed in reaching. It means to succeed in business affairs. That's what it means. And Deuteronomy 8.18, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to make wealth, that he may establish his covenant with your fathers as it is this day. God anoints people for wealth, to make wealth, to make wealth, to create wealth. Talking about wealth creation. Second Chronicles 20.20, 20, believe in the Lord your God and... So shall you be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. That word prosper there is the same word you prosper used in Psalm 118 verse 25. Where he's praying, the, the psalmist is praying, O Lord, send now prosperity. Save now, O Lord. Save now, I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Part of your salvation is prosperity. May God save us from every form of poverty and lack. We need a change, everyone. We need to move forward, to move forward. So that word to prosper means to push forward. It means to break out, break out from the crowd. It means to make satisfactory progress, to make satisfactory progress. Progress. You look at the way you're moving forward and it's satisfactory to you. It means to be profitable, to prosper. If hunger is good, why did, did Jesus do a miracle to feed thousands? Two times. If hunger is good, why did he have to do a miracle? He said, let me produce a miracle for these people to be fed. I don't want to release them hungry. They can faint on the way. Why did Jesus give Peter breakthrough in his fishing business two times? Miraculous breakthrough, two times. If Jesus cares about poverty as a treasure, what Jesus is against is the love of money that manifests in the way people make money and in the way they use it. What he's against is greed. Eat the man's own, eat God's own. You only you. You eat your own, eat man's own, and eat God's own. Only you. Greed. God's will is to prosper his children. And that includes you, any one of us here. He doesn't handpick people, but he's looking, when it comes to kingdom prosperity, God is looking for people he can trust that will become channels in his hands. And a Pipe that conducts water never gets dry. Why lakes dry up is that they receive water, they don't give up. Give up. Lake Charles is almost dry now. You know about that. 
Lakes collect water, they don't give out. So prosperity is in the redemptive plan of God. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That even though he was rich, as rich as God could be, yet for sex, he became poor. So poor that on the cross he was begging for water. So poor that he was begging for water on the cross. Sacrificing for us. And they didn't give him the water. They rather gave him vinegar. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that even though he was rich, yes, for our sakes, he was made poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Threefold effect of the curse of the law. Spiritual numbness and death. Sickness and disease. And economic hardship. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us, as it is written, cursed the seed that hands on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. The blessing of Abraham. There is no way we can move the things of God, the program of God, for the way it should move without much financial breakthrough from the people of God and from whoever God will raise across the world to move things forward financially. Zechariah 1.17 says that God, the, my city shall yet spread forward, spread abroad by the prosperity of the people. Through prosperity, my city shall yet. Zechariah 1.17 Again proclaims, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city shall again Spread out through prosperity. Through prosperity, not through poverty. If God empowers us massively, by again we say more money means more ministry. If you give me 500 million naira now, I don't need to fast and pray as to what to do with it. The same with 1 billion. If you give me three billion, I can wait on God. As long as ministry comes, I can wait on God. Okay, what next? What and what? But I know what to do. The Lord will again comfort Zion and we choose Jerusalem. Prosperity is key. Where will 2 Corinthians 9, 8, God is able to cause all grace to abound towards us that we always have his sufficiency in all things. We have abundance for every good work, everything he will, every mandate he gives us, we have abundance to carry it out. That's what he wants. That's the st a standard for prayer for finances in the New Testament. We have abundance for every good thing we need to do. When the unbelievers, when wicked people, money is in their hands, they use it to do a lot of bad things. But we use it for every good work that God assigns to us. Whew. And so Jesus said in Mark 10, 29 and 30. So Jesus answered and said, As shortly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. The gospel costs. The foundation for that first building is going to cost, with the current state of things, maybe something and the revision we did in the neighborhood of 50 million naira. And that's what it disappeared under the ground, though. It's not the building. That's pile for piling. So he said, those that give this, he said, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. And in the age to come, eternal life prosperity, physical and spiritual.
So turn your faith loose. Help me tell you number. Turn your faith loose. Turn your faith loose. Tell another neighbor, turn your faith loose. Even in the area of finances. How do you do it? Number one, be willing. Number two, be obedient. Number three, put your faith to work. Turn your faith loose. Isaiah 1 verse 19 says, If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Pahagin, after he left pastoring, went into the field. Things were rough initially, very rough. He said his shoes were worn out, his tires were worn out. He said, one day, he, he began to pray. He said, God, God, you, when you told me to leave pastoring, I left. I obeyed you. You said if we are willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. He said, I obeyed you. But I'm surely not eating the good of the land. Neither am I wearing the good of the land. He told him every, he started telling God everything the last past, church he, pastors was doing for them. And now that he's there in the open, that is rough. But I obeyed you. God said, you obeyed all right. Said, God spoke to him and said, you obeyed, but you're not willing. He said, but you're not willing. He said it didn't take him 10 minutes to adjust himself and became willing. Jesus will come to a man that is sick and ask him, do you want to be healed? You that are struggling with concerning money, do you want to prosper? You may not for some reason. There are many fears. I told you a story on, on Friday. Even Kenneth Copeland, at his level, he didn't build a house that he liked until he turned 70. Building ministry. And so that people we, 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 he, he, So it was at the age of 70 he built his dream house. He was telling a story. One day, Somebody bought a Mercedes S-Class, registered it, shipped it to him, brand new. Why he was yet talking of that? Two days after, or the next day, they shipped another one, exact replica of it for the wife. He didn't know what to do. A, a, a guest minister, he was driving to the airport. He was asking, he said, look at what has just happened. What do I do? He's afraid. They will say, I use church money to do it. That is the way. Do you know, even way back then, there, somebody bought a, an Opel recorder. An Opel... What's that Opel again? Opel recorder. What was that one they bought for you? Opel recorder. For, for, uh, for my wife. I know the person that bought it. When he was going to, to, to for his traditional, he, 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 he was working in a good place. I told him, listen, don't go there and all these things they listed. Don't go there and spend all your money on these things. When you finish marrying, you still have to set up your home. Whatever you save, you can use it and set up the kitchen for your wife. He came back. He said that that advice I gave him saved me a lot of money. Shortly after, he bought a car for my wife. Then one day, I was in the council meeting then, and I just told him, uh, the brother that bought that car, one, one, one sister that was there, an elderly sister, sister not, uh, maybe around 60 days, she said, hey, okay, well, that clears the air now. Heaven-bound Christian. Heaven-bound Christian. In church, me, laboring. The way people think. You, you're living in fear. You're even afraid of being blessed. If you're willing, I'm willing. I'm willing. And if you're obedient, are you willing to prosper? Or are you like our God that is afraid of prosper? Don't give me too much money so that I won't backslide. And don't give me poverty so that I won't steal. It's a heart issue. If your heart is prepared, neither wealth nor lack will make you do the wrong thing. If you're willing, if you're obedient, then don't lose your faith. Learn to speak. Matthew 8, 18, 18. Whatever we lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Check your mouth. Don't ever use your mouth to, to speak poverty and lack. Don't ever use your mouth to speak failure concerning yourself. Nothing is working. 
Nothing. In one, one brother, his language was, Pastor, there is big trouble. Big trouble. Don't ever use your mouth to say, I, 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 don't, I can tell you I don't have cash. I can tell you I don't have cash. But you will never hear me tell you that I don't have money. Are you hearing me? I can tell you I don't have cash. But money goes beyond cash. Um, prosperity goes beyond money. I can't tell you I don't have cash. You may, even big companies may not have cash. But, uh, but I can't tell you I don't have money. I have money. You see, it may be in somebody's hand now. But I have money. Somebody say I have money. It just something, whatever will happen, and then the money will get to my hands. But I, have, I always have money. I, read my, I always have money. I always have money. If you're waiting for when I say I don't nearly die, I won't die. I shall live to declare the words of God. Buhari didn't kill me. Tunibu will not kill me. <laughs> we will survive. Habakkuk cried out. I said, oh Lord our God, we shall not die. We shall not die. Learn to speak the right things. Have the faith of God. Mark 6, 11, 22, 23. We've said a lot during the fast. In the interest of those, but there's so much we talk about. We need to get it right. If you don't need the money, get it, send it to me. Have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you, when Jesus in the, this thing, you know, this thing was written in the Middle East setting, in the Jewish culture, Middle East setting. To say verily is like saying, some people say to God who made me. Some people will say I swear to God. Some people will say what I'm telling is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's the language Jesus is using when he said, verily in King James, assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sand, does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall be done. He will have whatever he says. Learn to speak creative, constructive words. Stop destroying with your words. Stop pulling yourself down with your words. I'm a prosperous man. Who else? I'm a prosperous Joseph was a servant. The Bible says he was a prosperous man. That's who he was. And it manifested over time. That's who he was. He carried it wherever he went. He carried that favor, that divine hand upon him, wherever he went. It, the, the address was not the issue. He was a prosperous man. And the Lord was with him. In prison, the Lord was with him. Wherever he went, the Lord was with him. The divine Factor makes all the difference. Learn to speak the right words. Oh, this business is not working. You, you are not planning for it to work by your words. Look at Proverbs in closing. 12 verse 14. Proverbs 12 14. Proverbs 12 14. Listen. If your level is so that all your needs are made, please make money. Give it to us. Let's use it for ministry. Give it to me. I have things to do with it. Remember the needy. The helpless is there calling for funds. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hands will be rendered unto him. Walk and speak the right things. Those are the two ways you will feed well. Those are the two ways you will prosper. Stop using your hand to finish what is remaining. Use your hand to bless what is remaining and cause it to increase. A man shall be satisfied with good by what comes out of his mouth. And also his, the reward for his work shall be rendered unto him. Two ways to advance, to prosper. Speak, walk. No food for lazy man. Did you hear something? Turn your faith loose. Speak words of faith. Operate in the spirit of faith. Second Corinthians 4.13. 
according to that which is written, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Be, start speaking what you believe, what you want to see happen in your life. Stop rehashing circumstances. Oh, the, 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 this Tinubu's regime has finished everybody. Oh, what, what was left of Buhari? I, oh, 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 there is no hope. You? No. Say there is hope for me. Because there is hope if three feet is cut down. Once he's sensing water, the world, it will germinate again. We are praying for finances. Turn your faith loose. I want you to rise up today. Renew your mind. If you've not been willing, Jesus will go to a man that is sick. 38 years, paralyzed. Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? <laughs> do you want to survive? I think that's John 5, 7 or whatever. He, 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 he said, a man, he's, he knows. Jesus, the Bible said that Jesus, knowing that he has been there a long time in that sickness, he went and asked him, do you want to be made whole? Will you be healed? He's asking you the same thing. Do you want to prosper? Do you want a better deal in life? You, somebody might be like Agor that doesn't want it. Somebody might have fear. Make and robbers, no, make me target you. <laughs> that kind of money, where I go hide them? Bring it first. We will, I will help you look for it. <laughs> oh God, bring up first, I go show you hiding place. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Destroy your fears. Destroy your fears. The Igbo, there is a language in the Igbo side. They said, is they said, the timid or the fearful will not prosper fully. In my local parlance, this is the way they put it. Asomanya, Abaha. It's a they make the no talk. They go say, hey. you said the person will not prosper. It takes boldness to seize the things of the kingdom. Are you hearing me? It takes boldness. It takes a willing heart. If you're willing and you're obedient, ready to move, you will eat the good of the land. If you're willing, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing? Look at the faces of your children. Is that all? Is that all there could be? Look at the church. Is that all we could do? We can do more. You can do more. It's not by calculation. It's by trust. Trust God and God put yourself in the position where God can trust. If I put, give, put this money in his hand, he will not backslide. And he will use it the way I want him to use it. God needs people he can trust with resources. The resources are there. There is no fresh money God will throw down from heaven. It's already here. If God throws down money from heaven, it will be counterfeit. And God is not a counterfeiter. It's there already. But he know, something needs to move. And certain things need to happen. And money moves from one hand to the other. Position yourself. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Position yourself. Be willing. Be obedient. That's the message for today. And that's what we are praying for. And then we are going to round off this prayer tomorrow. And we will resume the next week, right? Next week we we'll resume in another direction of open doors. Any door God has opened for us, no man can shut it. In the name of Jesus Christ.